So if you're younger, you're in your 30s, you're in your 20s, you're in your 40s, whatever it is, and you see a decline from 80 to 70 to 60 to even lower, yeah, that isn't okay. That is a concern. So here's some other things I want to cover. There are causes and contributors to the decline of your kidney functioning. Some of you may know this, high blood pressure and diabetes are two major factors that contribute to having kidney problems, unfortunately. So it's really important that you get those issues under control as much as you possibly can to try to improve your overall health and kidney function. For those who aren't dealing with diabetes, blood sugar issues, or high blood pressure, but you are dealing with a low GFR level and you have concerns about it, there's something else you should look into. This is something that doctors absolutely never told me. They never made this connection and I discovered it through personal research and exploration and experience. So hypothyroidism can be a cause of your lower kidney function and EGFR and it is reversible if treated. Now that's something I just discovered recently and was really really grateful to learn this. Here's the deal with the hypothyroidism and the creatinine. Okay so that's the other level you will see on your blood work is creatinine. Creatinine is a normal byproduct of muscle metabolism that the kidneys ex excrete. So thyroid hormone, it provides energy to every organ in your body, including the kidneys. With insufficient levels of thyroid hormone, a hypothyroid person's kidneys, they can't perform at a normal rate. This leads to a decreased EGFR and a reduced clearance of creatinine, so they start to rise and your EGFR falls. And so there was a conclusion of a study on this, and it stated... Thyroid hormone therapy not only preserved renal function better, but was also an independent predictor of renal outcome in chronic kidney disease patients with subclinical hypothyroidism. Also, in case anybody doesn't know this, a normal TSH, which is the test done on your thyroid, it is the most basic, ridiculous test. It's not accurate enough to tell you if you're really having a thyroid issue, unfortunately, and many doctors only use TSH to test unless you really urge them, like really, really urge them to do more testing. And by the way, I have a post on my website that explains all of the testing in detail and what to do and what to ask for. And if your doctors don't help you, I also explain the other options you have because you do have options to do the testing outside of their care for it's about 100 bucks. But it's worth it if you are really struggling with chronic fatigue issues and you think it could be your thyroid, but they won't help you. With the thyroid levels, even though sometimes your TSH level might be normal and other thyroid tests might seem normal, there's a difference between normal and optimal levels. And so, like I said, I have a post on my website and I have the optimal levels on there as well in case you want to check on yours if you were tested. After this video, I'm going to make a second video for anybody who is interested because I want to share with you guys my personal health issues in relation, in relation to my EGFR level. And like I said, I was recently tested and the the results were 62. I was just tested again a week ago and it came out as 55. That's the worst it's ever been for me. It's always hovered close to 60 though. And what I'm gonna do is I have a plan to try to correct this EGFR level as much as humanly possible. Like I said, I'm gonna be making another video and I'm going to self experiment starting now and I'm going to be retested with blood work in three months from now. I'm going to do a couple of different things, which I'm going to explain in the next video to really, really take a step up to try to really see what can be done because I'm all about self-experimentation and I'm all about having hope that things can improve, even though doctors like to tell you that, oh, there's no way to improve it. There's nothing you can do. You can't repair it. It's You're doomed to death and you're just old and aging and... If you have what appears to be poor kidney function, number one, don't give up. Number two, there's a couple different things that could be going on that could have affected your results. So don't give up. Instead, do things to improve your kidney levels, even when doctors tell you it's so impossible. Many doctors tell you that the kidney cells don't reproduce once the organ is fully formed, but those who tell you that are not on top of the current research. Research shows that the kidneys are actually regenerating and repairing themselves throughout life. So researchers at the Stanford Institute for Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine and the Sackler School of Medicine in Israel have shown how the kidneys constantly grow and have a surprising ability to regenerate themselves. Now, to get back to basics real quick, here are some of the signs of kidney disease, though some symptoms vary from person to person, and I swear some of them are symptoms of thyroid problems as well. So you are more tired, you have less energy, you have trouble concentrating, you have trouble sleeping, you have dry and itchy skin, 
you feel the need to urinate more often, you may see blood in your urine, your urine may be foamy, you are experiencing persistent puffiness around your eyes, or your ankles and feet are swollen. Here are some things I want to share with you guys about what to do and what to avoid. There's another thing that doctors commonly tell their patients dealing with kidney concerns and their advice could actually be damaging and worsening your kidney levels. In the process of researching how much water consumption is necessary for proper kidney function, some really surprising and conflicting information arose. Although hydration is important, excess hydration while dealing with kidney issues, it is not advised, according to a paper by the Clinical Journal of the American Society of Nephrology. According to the paper, patients are often advised by primary care physicians to maintain a generous fluid intake. They said that an increased fluid intake in management of chronic kidney disease is not supported from modern evidence-based medicine. Another study looked at whether high fluid intake with chronic kidney disease was harmful. It was shown that a high daily fluid intake of over 2.4 liters per day was linked to having an accelerated loss of kidney function versus those who consumed 1.4 liters per day. It was concluded that in chronic kidney disease, there was no evidence of benefit of a high fluid intake because it was considered a risk factor for disease. According to the paper, that does not mean it's beneficial for the kidneys when you restrict fluid intake. Dehydration can cause problems and possibly lead to kidney damage. The report from the American Society of Nephrology stated that they advocate that there is no advantage to increasing the daily fluid intake above what the thirst sensation tells you. Quote, the thirst mechanism is one of the most delicately regulated body systems and works very predictably. However, it should be noted that age-related changes in thirst sensation increase the susceptibility for dehydration hydration in the elderly, particularly in the elderly females. One thing my doctor never ever told me, in fact recommended these products to me over and over again over the years, was that taking ibuprofen and other anti-inflammatories like Aleve and other pain-related over-the-counter medicines can be very damaging to the kidneys and some of them can damage the liver. Doctors often recommend these products like they're nothing to people of all ages, young and old. And any other drugs, like street drugs, can also damage your kidneys. If you end up in the ER for some type of painful emergency situation, could be anything. Doctors will often give you a medicine for pain relief while you're there. Even their strong anti-inflammatories have the potential to damage the kidneys. So often when you go in for an emergency situation or whatever it is, it depends on what the emergency is. Of course, sometimes you need something to help you deal with the pain. But oftentimes, I feel like we are overly using these types of things. And pain isn't the worst thing that we could have. It depends though, like I said, on the situation because they're all different types of pain. In addition, so if you end up having a CT or an MRI with a contrast material, many of those can also cause kidney damage. There are other dyes that are used during surgical procedures that too can cause kidney damage in some people. So please know, like if you're gonna have a surgery done, communicate very clearly with the doctor and ask that doctor if he or she plans on using some of these dyes or not during and after your surgery. Because for example, I had a pretty big surgery done several years back and I just wasn't informed of that being done. And on the very basic healthcare level, I would think that they would inform me to be sure that I don't have an allergy because after discovering what dye was used, if they would have done that in my son, for example, he does have an allergy to this type of dye. And so they never asked me about it or told me that they were using it. And in addition to that, if I was aware, if my doctor had made me aware that my kidney levels aren't doing very well, then I could have informed that person of it. I have done that though, by the way, where I was in an ER and I informed the doctor that I don't have the best kidney functioning and I don't want to cause any more damage to it. And he insisted on giving me a painkiller that he said was super, super safe. And I was in so out of it and in a lot of pain at the time that I didn't have enough in me to look it up. But if I would have looked it up, I would have seen that it too does cause kidney damage. So, so many times, I don't know what's up with doctors just saying, oh yeah, it's safe. It's one of the safer ones. Oh yeah, it's safe. Really? It's not safe. I don't want to worsen my kidneys. I don't know why I get it. They don't care. It's not their... It's not them, but it's real. I'm sorry if you guys sense my frustration here. It shouldn't happen. It just shouldn't happen. So wanted to let you guys know that. Besides that, from medical studies that I have read, I personally, in my approach to this situation, I'm not going to cut out meat from my diet. 
from a study that I read, kidney function was not worsened in those who ate a lot of meat. If they also ate vegetables and fruit regularly or with those meat-heavy meals, I'm going to talk about this more in my next video. Lastly, and this is anecdotal, but I've heard success stories of people who have fasted to some degree, some people for days, some people here and there, once a week, once a month, whatever it is. Some of them have had improvements in their EGFR levels over time. Like I said, that's anecdotal and that's something I'm going to be exploring in my next video that I make where I'm going to tell you guys more about my personal situation and what I'm going to do to see if I can improve things and I can't wait to find out. I mean, I hope it's going to work. I also think that the testing done for your kidney levels isn't overly reliable or accurate. I've had so many tests done, sometimes month after month, with greatly fluctuating EGFR numbers. This actually gives me hope that my real functioning level isn't as bad as it seems to be. And I just want to help people if, if there are things we can do, we need to be doing them because I don't like it when those doctors and whoever just tell you, like, this is what it is, there's no way it's going to improve. How can they say something like that? So anyway, for testing... <clears throat> You do need to know some things. It's important to test the EGFR levels when you've had an overnight fasting test. So a lot of doctors, that this is with the VA, they do a test blood work on you once a year and they have you fast overnight. Studies have shown that if you've consumed a high protein meal, specifically meat, a certain number of hours prior to your blood test, it can temporarily lower your EGFR levels. The creatine in the meat will convert to creatinine and that will be raised and then your EGFR will be lowered subsequently. Next. There is said to be a very accurate test to determine if you actually do have kidney problems. And so EGFR is the gold standard test, but there is another test that can be done if you wanna like double check things and your doctor is open-minded enough to do this other test on you, or you can pay out of pocket and have it done on your own uh, at like in any lab test now or a lab core location. I'll share details below, or like I keep mentioning, it's in a, website post that I made. It explains how to do that. So the test that is supposed to be more accurate is called cystine C. And you can get the cystine C test in addition to the creatinine that is less subject to fluctuation. So taken together with the creatinine testing, it can estimate the GFR more precisely. That is it, you guys. That is what I want to share with you in regards to your eGFR levels, your kidney functioning, and what you need to know and what you can do. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. I am very grateful when I have a good doctor to assist with these things, but as of now, it comes a point, there comes a point where your health is your own priority and nobody cares more about your health than yourself. So that's why I recommend not giving in to just what they say with these small town doctors or big town doctors, whoever they are, them telling you there's nothing that can be done. I don't believe it for a second. I believe there's a lot that can be done and great improvement that can be had. But if you're in the unfortunate situation where you're already down to like stage four, it's going to be a lot harder. And I don't know how much success people can have to bring themselves up from stage four and higher. I did watch one video created by a young woman and she was able to bring her levels up so significantly. I believe she was in stage four or the bottom end of stage three. And her levels are drastically higher after making some lifestyle changes. So I will try to find her video and link to it below for anybody interested. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please check out my next video where I'm going to talk about more my personal journey and what I'm going to do and my plan to try to tackle the situation. And then I will make follow-up videos and I'm going to just let you guys know in a few months what my levels are. So thank you so much for watching and take care. Bye.